Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Black Ops Cold War video. With Season 3 and the nuke event around the corner, we have a few interesting developments. So first of all, there is a brand new update that is coming out before the Season 3 update that is scheduled for 9pm Pacific Time or 12am Eastern Time. If you are in other time zones, you'll just have to go ahead and convert that on Google. This is separate from the Season 3 update. The Season 3 update will begin 24 hours later at 9am Pacific Time on April the 21st slash 12am on April 22nd Eastern Time. And in this new update that is coming very shortly, there is going to be a new lobby theme. The strafe run score streak will be added early into the game. We will be seeing the addition of the cargo truck. There will be new weapon tuning, which I'll come on to in a little second. League play combat records. There will be increased XP in zombies. I'm happy about that. Some people are complaining it was just taking too long to level up. Well, they have increased the rates. They will also be adding the expanded outbreak objectives that I talked about in my last video. You can see that a screenshot on screen from Treyarch's blog post if you want to pause it and read it to find out what these changes are. But I already talked about that in the last video. We will be seeing split screen updates and an operator randomizer feature. And there will also be some more updates that they've not disclosed. In terms of the weapon tuning that is coming with this preseason update, all LMGs will be getting a balancing update and all shotguns include including the Street Sweeper, the FFAR-1, the Krig-6, the Assault Rifle Barrel Attachments and the SMG Sprint Speed and more changes are going to be coming. They will be releasing the full patch notes tomorrow and I will probably cover that here on the channel. This video has been kindly sponsored by Game Round. Game Round is an exclusive, free, community-driven platform where games are picked every week to be supported by you. They're dedicated to helping game developers gather feedback, improve and polish their games to provide provide the ultimate gaming experience. If you want to check them out, just head to the link in this video's description. Once there, create an account and you will see the testing tab. Here there are a diverse plethora of games to choose from. When you see one you like, click play and you'll be prompted to install the Game Round Launcher. Download it and extract the file with WinRAR to begin the install. But from the launcher, you'll be able to download and install the game. After you've played it for a decent amount of time, you are then able to review it by filling out a quick survey about your experience. Because you are helping out the developers in playtesting and improving their games, they want to reward you via the G-Points currency. As you playtest, survey and participate in events, you'll be able to accumulate more points. You can then use these points to purchase gaming gear and other items such as headphones, controllers and more. It's the perfect system. Play free brand new games, help them out and in return you will be rewarded. So just to reminder, you can check out Game Round for free using the link in this video's description. Anyways, let's continue with the rest of the video. Here is the really exciting piece of information though. A lot of people have been complaining that in order to unlock the DLC weapons, you need to play a multiplayer or war zone, and for Zombies fans, they are forced to play modes that they might not otherwise play. Well, Trek have announced that in Season 3, there are going to be weapon unlock challenges in Zombies, including for the Grozer, the Mac 10 the Street Sweeper, the Farah 83, the LC-10, the R1 Shadowhunter, the ZRG 20mm, the Sledgehammer, the Wakazashi, the Machete, the E-Tool, the Ballistic Knife, and many more. This is a huge change and I'm really happy about this. I hope that when you unlock it, you unlock it in all modes. I hope that they don't make the challenges separate depending on which mode you are playing. I think it's not going to be though. I think if you unlock it in Zombies, it'll be unlocked for all modes, or if you unlock it in Multiplayer, you unlock it in all modes just like it was before. I doubt they're going to change that at all, but but they have shown us how you unlock the R1 Shadowhunter. So, to unlock this, you need to use a special weapon that has been pack-a-punched at least twice and kill 50 special enemies. So, pretty simple. I'm really happy for this change, though, because I haven't unlocked many of the DLC weapons in the game, mainly because I play zombies and I just really haven't had a chance to even play and grind them all out, but I'm definitely a lot more willing to try and unlock them in a zombies. The next thing is that Warzone has been announced to reach 100 million players, which it has managed to obtain in just over a year's time, in time for the 1980s Verdansk, introduced with Season 3 with this nuke event. By the way, in terms of this new update that is going to be coming out, pre-downloads have gone live on the PlayStation 4 already, and it is 11.9 gigabytes. But you won't be able to install it until 9pm Pacific Time. But yeah, Season 3 officially begins on April 21st at 9pm Pacific Time, so I guess we're just going to have to wait for that. A lot of people were expecting a a 
Season 3 gameplay trailer today, but we haven't seen anything, so I'm assuming we're going to get one tomorrow. I really hope so. Or maybe they're literally going to wait until the nuke event, and that might give us a trailer. I'm guessing the trailer is going to showcase the 1980s version of Adansk. Maybe that's why we have not seen anything yet, because usually in the past seasons, we've been getting them around a week before release. They did release a new image of Standoff, but it doesn't really show us anything. So yeah, we haven't really gotten too much news. By the way, I mentioned in prior videos how I was thinking about live streaming the nuke event. I think it would be a very successful stream, but I think I'm just going to focus on videos because the nuke event is going to span across a really long time period on the 21st and the 22nd. There's going to be multiple different things and I could stream each individually. I'm sure they would do very well on the channel, but I think I'm just going to be focusing on doing videos. I might change my mind. I'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow, but it's just going to be quite tiresome live streaming the whole time and trying to do videos as well and covering all of the new content. So we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. By the way, for anyone interested, there was a recent article release from the Washington Post about the creation of a war zone. There's a ton of interesting stuff about the backstory, about how it was planned at one point to be set in Afghanistan, the origins of the Gulag, and a lot more. I will leave a link to it down in this video's description if you want to read it after you are done watching this video. By the way, a bunch of creators the other day announced that they were taking part in some sort of secret meeting, so most likely a bunch of creators have already played the new Warzone map or tested it or maybe had an interview with the developers about their thoughts and how they can improve. Something clearly went on recently. I don't know who exactly has taken part. There was a lot of Spanish creators specifically, but I don't think it was exclusive to that. And this is completely unrelated to Black Ops Cold War or Warzone, but Magua tweeted out today saying it seems like there would have been around 12 more Zombies maps on Call of Duty Online for Cyborg Zombies. I know a lot of people don't actually play that, but they might have seen videos of it on YouTube. It's the Chinese free-to-play Call of Duty game that was supported by Raven Software, but I don't think it's supported anymore. Each seemingly had its own bosses and stuff, so Summit was apparently going to be a zombies map, and there was going to be a boss that would be this huge half-human, half-cyborg creature with his lung sticking out. So there was going to be a Cuban town with a Demogorgon-esque creature, a jungle with a huge zombie knight, an abandoned city seems to have been a subway system, and a London map. And I find that interesting because, and I find that interesting because Raven Soft are helping the other developers on their games and they are also working on Warzone. So I wonder if they could ever bring any ideas that they have and they've implemented in Call of Duty Online over to traditional Call of Duty. Because Call of Duty Online has a lot of really interesting stuff that I think people would enjoy. Oh, and by the way, this Tracer Pack bundle is now live in Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. I'm kind of probably going to have to censor it a little bit because YouTube have very weird rules around this stuff. Anyways, that's everything I wanted to go over in today's video. Thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you're not here for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.